today to discuss this and the other issues of the day. Liberal frontbencher Steve Chobo and Labor's Shadow Employment Minister Brendan O'Connor. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Steve, this is a bit morning. of a worry. You shouldn't lose Canning. Well, look, it's, uh, it's usual that there's a swing against the government in a by-election, so uh, obviously we're going to be out there campaigning hard. We believe as a government that we've been hitting the right mark in terms of restoring the nation's finances, stopping the boats, accessing the carbon tax and, of course, having a strong economic plan for our nation's future. That's what this government remains steadfastly focused on. And frankly, uh, all of us would welcome uh, the opportunity to focus on the issues that are important to all Australians uh, rather than some of the current side issues. So, so why haven't you... Up. Well, it's not just the Labor party is that it's, it's your own side of politics doing much of it. Uh, the six hour meeting last week didn't involve the Labor Party. Well, uh, as I said, the fact is that as a government we're very focused on firmly repairing the nation's finances uh, and making sure that our strong economic plan for our nation's future can be implemented. Now we've been thwarted uh, in a number of the uh, attempts that we've made, a number of the initiatives that we've undertaken, because the Labor Party doesn't want to accept the responsibility that they have as an opposition to make sure that as a nation we undertake responsible savings and make sure that our deficit doesn't continue to increase. Uh, Labor seems to want to wash their hands of the $400 billion worth of debt that they racked up in six years, but as a government we are very focused on jobs and on economic growth. Yeah, Steve Chobo doing his best to, to keep that focus and doing quite well so far on that, but I, I guess the thing is with Canning, the seat uh, you won back in 1998 from memory. Uh, would you be hoping to, you'd be hoping to, to win it again given the current mood? Well, it's a very, very strong uh, Liberal seat. Uh, uh, Don Randall uh, was a, a good advocate. He held it for a long time. Very difficult for us to win that. Uh, but we'll be putting a good candidate in the field, in the electorate, and presenting our arguments about uh, the future, about uh, creating jobs and and providing opportunities. Uh, unemployment in WA has been rising, and quite, given it's been a powerhouse for this nation for so long, to see that its unemployment rate currently is higher than the national average is of concern. I think that would be of concern to the voters of Canning. Uh, and I think because of the, the transition uh, in the mining industry, we're seeing a lot of uh, people losing jobs, uh, particularly in the construction phase uh, ending. Uh, and as a result, I think there'll be concerns about what jobs plan there is. It doesn't seem to be one articulated by the government. So uh, we'll fight. We'll fight hard there. But it's a, you know it's a, a liberal, a strong liberal held seat, and uh, it'd be a, a very difficult thing to do. If the, if the, the coalition did lose that seat, the, the prime minister's grip on the job would be would be more, even more tenuous than it is at the moment given <clears throat> well what do you what do you make of the AFR report this morning that there are some foot soldiers canvassing uh, around to see whether people's mood have, have might have changed since uh, the, the non spill back in February you know, Kieran, in politics there's always uh, chatter around the place. I mean, uh, it wasn't that long ago, only a week or so ago, when we were hearing uh, moves within the Labor Party with Tanya Plibersek uh, looking at what she could do with Bill Shorten. I mean, there's always <laughs> conversations that some people want to you have, different people. Rumor, no, I didn't start the rumour, but, um, <laughs> but, but I'm, happy to, I'm happy to raise it this morning because I, yeah, I know no, that people, there, people are, of course, familiar with the fact that there's a lot of dysfunction uh, with the Labor leadership. And, uh, and so, look, there'll always, be, there'll always be chatter around, is my point. Point. Um, I think what Australians want to know is, and don't get too concerned about, is the chatter. They know that there's always noise in politics. But what I know that Australians want to be focused on, want the government to be focused on, are the issues that are important to them. And that's precisely why we refuse to be distracted uh, by these types of side issues and remain focused on the main But, but if, if you lost tanning, do. there'd be a lot of your colleagues who would be very nervous. And, I mean, obviously not everyone has a seat like Moncrief with a margin of... What is it, 30% or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but look, the, the fact is that in a seat like mine of Moncrief, uh, with a very large small business constituency, um, small businesses, and the reason why I think in large part uh, many small businesses are strong coalition supporters, is because they know that it's only been the coalition that's had a $5.5 billion small business plan uh, to make sure that we can get the engine room of the economy going again. So you, you tell your away. colleagues to just calm down a bit, those that are, yeah. are talking, because obviously Phil Curry is a respected is, journalist, is a, the AFL. A respected paper, it's the front Absolutely. page. Absolutely. Look, th th these are these are uh, good journalists, good newspaper uh, reports about Labor leadership instability, about the coalition. <laughs> we don't worry about it too much. Really what we remain focused on is the task that we we're elected to do. Well, that just sounds like I know that 
Steve and his job has to travel a lot. He must have been out of the country for the last few weeks because th this government is chaotic, dysfunctional, divided. And not just at the in the back bench, we're, talk we're seeing amongst senior cabinet colleagues. Last week you had effectively the Attorney General dressed down uh, the Minister for Social Services on his proposition about having a plebiscite uh, on uh, marriage equality. I think but the at least we've got, got a position. You guys problems. are all over the workshop. Our position is clear. It should be is put, it to, the, or put bills? to the Parliament. Which one's yours? Allow, or bills? And you know what? The Prime Minister should not be imposing his conscience on all members of Parliament and Senators. He should allow the members and well, that's Senators what to have a to vote in this parliamentary term. We it's, can do that. It feels like you're talking about the government, um, dysfunctional government. Um, you, you, us three have had these discussions for quite a while now and feels like yesterday we were talking about you in those terms. So you, well, you, you know yeah, dysfunction when you see it. Well, we've had difficulties in government. Uh, but you'd have to say, and look, I think the fair-minded observer would say we've been united and focused in uh, in this parliamentary term, led by, led ably by Bill Shorten. Uh, it's a challenging thing to do, but uh, uh, the fact is that the government is the one that's divided, distracted, uh, talking about itself, thinking of one job only, that of the Prime Minister's. Uh, they need to focus on the needs of Australians, not themselves. You know, in terms of the, uh, the same-sex marriage issue, you said you've got a position, but apparently out of Cabinet last night there wasn't a, a position concluded in terms of whether or not the people's vote would be a referendum or a plebiscite. So the uncertainty continues. Uh, but it's not uncertainty at all. Um, the fact is, Kieran, that there's a clear choice that Australians have between the pathway forward that the Coalition is offering and the pathway forward that the Labor Party is offering. Under the Coalition, we've said that this should be a people's vote and not a politician's vote. Uh, under the Labor Party, so they're is saying... It, okay, they're can saying you clarify a plebiscite or referendum? Well, look, I think, and the Prime Minister made clear, that will be sorted out over the next couple of weeks. He said that yesterday today um, and it will be sorted out over the next couple of weeks. My personal point of view is I think a plebiscite is the right way forward. Um, ultimately though that decision will be taken in the next couple of weeks entirely consistent with what the Prime Minister said. But there's a suggestion that uh, if it's a referendum that the, the, uh, the government would essentially have civil war on its hands because of individuals on your side who, who believe, like you, there should be a plebiscite. They won't cop a referendum because they see it as a, an attempt to kill off the issue. You know, uh, with these issues, Kieran, there's always, as I said, people who are trying to make a buck uh, by throwing in their two cents worth. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this could not be more cut and dry. And what the Australian people know is the choice they have is a plebiscite or a referendum, whichever way well, ultimately... We don't no, 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 know that. no, but we've said but it'll be sorted out over the next couple of weeks. So <laughs> calm down. They'll have a choice in terms of a people's vote well, we could, or the Labor Party we approach, which is, to, now. Which, exactly, which is the Labor Party's approach is to say the people don't get their say and the well, Labor members of Parliament when will did have this their, whole, have This their is their a complete, this whole confected, you know, idea of a, a plebiscite has come up to delay a vote on marriage equality. It's an excuse. It's, the, it's a fig leaf of an excuse because it is the Parliament that can determine this matter. The Parliament's been elected to determine such matters. It's the legislation that needs to be changed and that for that reason uh, the Prime Minister should, should allow members of the, the so-called conscious party to allow them but, to have but, but a conscious But you'd probably vote. lose a vote now anyway, so the, the question is, I, I have, have the likes true. of Scott Morrison and others saying there should be a people's vote actually done the advocates of same-sex marriage a favour. I think it's about you're not going to win one in Parliament it's about anyway. Kicking this uh, down the road and hoping. But at least it's unequivocal it then. If you have a people's well, vote, plebiscite. You've got a prime minister who doesn't even know whether it's going to be a referendum or a plebiscite. You've got a cabinet divided. You've had different views over the course of the last week or so. You've had a backbench uh, Liberal Party, but senior backbencher, uh, moving a an in, uh, moving a, um, a private members uh, bill, or um, and and that of course not being denied the, the to be, that. To have have a vote because the Prime Minister does not want people to have their say in the Parliament. Uh, now I think it's clear that we know how this can be resolved. It can be resolved in this parliamentary term. You can do more than one thing. You can deal with jobs and other issues and you can vote on such issues and I think the Australian public... You look at the polling though, that. polling this week in, in the seat of Canning and more broadly in the Fairfax poll suggested that people want I think uh, if they want a, the question, a do you popular want a vote, website, but I think if you if you ask the question, what is your view on this? I think it's not the, so much the method. We elect parliamentarians to make decisions. That's what we have. I mean, you want to run a democracy on plebiscite on every issue because the Prime Minister wants to avoid it being debated and determined in the Parliament. I don't believe that's the way in which our democracy operates. Do you, do you understand why some people, advocates of, of uh, same-sex marriage, legalising same-sex marriage, that they would be sceptical 
at best about the Prime Minister's intentions on this, given he's been a long-standing opponent of, uh, of this issue of, the, of reform here? Well, and the Prime Minister has acknowledged that he doesn't support same-sex marriage, but he's also made clear that this should be a people's vote, as indeed uh, did two-thirds of the party room. But, you know, the irony seems to be lost on Brendan. This is what I find strange. We've got a, a Labor member of Parliament who's a member of a political party where the deputy leader wanted to enforce a party political position. This is the same Labor Party where if you cross the floor you're disendorsed from Labor. And Brendan's sitting here saying, oh well they should have a conscience vote, there should be a free vote. His own political party that he's a member of doesn't allow Labor Party members to do that. So you can understand why, Kieran, as a member of the coalition, uh, we find it passing strange that we get lectured to from, you, from, you from Labor members of Parliament. We get, we get, it's passing strange it's that a Labor theory. member of Parliament would turn around and say, oh, well, this shouldn't happen or that shouldn't happen. Uh, the fact is that Labor has no form on this at all. Do you think, it, think it, would it be seen shame. to be, would it be seen to be tricky if the government went down the line of a referendum, as your colleague, Senator Birmingham, said on this program yesterday, I think sitting in that chair, said it would be seen as tricky if the government went down the line of a referendum Right, having, when you don't need to change the constitution. There is nothing tricky about having a people's vote. And Australians, I a believe, plebiscite. will feel... Well, uh, whether it's a plebiscite or a referendum, whichever form ultimately it's chosen, the Prime Minister has said that will be decided over the next couple of weeks. And that will cost uh, what, Irrespective of which form is chosen, giving people the chance to have their say is not a bad thing. And again, for the Labor Party to say, oh, well, does this mean we're going to be racing back to the Australian people on every issue? No, it doesn't right. mean that. Look, okay, let's, let's move on to Dyson Hayden. Do you think he is biased? I do. I do. And uh, I know others, uh, fair-minded people at the very least, believe there's an appearance of bias. Um, the fact that you accept an invitation to a political party event or fundraiser, you can argue about whether it's a fundraiser or an event, uh, while you're a Royal Commissioner, um, I think um, at the very least, Kieran gives an appearance uh, of uh, a bias, and for that reason he should uh, uh, disqualify himself from office. But, but he, when he realised... No. Uh, you don't, you don't, you no, don't no. buy that in argument? Fact, in fact, his explanation uh, yesterday just damned him even further. What he said was he was aware of the fact that the lawyer, a lawyer's branch of the Liberal Party invited him. Uh, and he accepted the invitation after he was offered and accepted the position of Royal Commission. He is, uh, he is now in a position that is untenable. Uh, and it would be in his interest, I think, and in, indeed uh, everyone's interest, that he made the decision uh, to disqualify himself. Now, there is an application before him. He's got every right to hear the submissions by the parties on that matter. If he chooses to do that, that's a process that he can uh, properly undertake. Uh, there's obviously, if he then chooses not to accept the submissions, that could go further uh, to federal court proceedings. So you think the unions will definitely move to, Look, to have it's him It's entirely removed. up to those parties, but on the face of what has happened, given the situation, given the nature of the commission, the nature, of the, the terms of reference of this Royal Commission, the fact that it's targeted towards the political opponents of the government, uh, I think it's absolutely impossible for him to okay. remain in that position. Steve Chabber? Well, you know, Blood is thicker than water, and uh, and I'm not surprised that Brendan's uh, the chief attack dog for the Labor Party on this, because of course his brother is a senior union leader. Um, the Labor Party are all there thanks to the union movement. I mean, let Australians never forget: every Labor member of Parliament is in Parliament for one reason and one reason only, and that's a gift of the Australian union movement. So of course, Labor members of Parliament are going to be out there scratching uh, eyes out and screaming like a banshee on this issue, because for them it's an important matter. Because if they can throw enough mud at Dyson Hayden and have uh, Hayden have some of it stick, then they've succeeded as far as they're concerned. So that's all so they're you, attempting you don't to think, do. You don't think there's any, any, any issue here at all, a, a perception? Know, look, of course it would have been preferable if this hadn't happened. But the fact that this has happened is by absolutely no means fatal. The fact that this has happened means it needs to be dealt with and it has been dealt with and the integrity of the Royal Commission moves forward because let's not forget this Royal Commission has uncovered a whole array of unsavoury practices that are taking place in the union movement. Things like linkages between organised criminal gangs in the union movement, $40,000 under the table uh, contributions towards Bill Shorts. Are, 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 are you worried now that, that, that those serious matters which have been uncovered will be the, the, the recommendations or you know the findings will be diminished because of this 
this perception now that Labor's got and the unions are going to try and make the most of it. Not at all. Any fair-minded person knows full well uh, that, yes, as I said, it's not ideal, but it is no. far from fatal. It's been dealt with. And, 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 the, and the fact is, this guy, uh, this uh, you know, respected yeah, high court judge capable, for years and years, jurist, but so that's... surely he can if separate you... no, no, speaking out of function his history, right? from his He was commissioned decisions. by the Griner government to write a report on the, uh, on the way in which you should regulate unions in the Giles Commission. This person has been acting acting for a, as a lawyer for the Liberal Party. He was also the main QC advising the executive officer of the, um, of the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Monarchists Against the Republic, that, where Tony Abbott was the executive officer. Okay. He has had a consistent association with the Liberal Party and this has come... And do, do you think that the way he handled Bill Shorten's appearance was biased? Of course. Of okay. course it was improper the way he handled that and actually prejudiced the testimony by his intervention, right. in, which I thought was very unusual, but I now believe and now I understand why he actually did that. Brendan O'Connor, Steve Chavo, gentlemen, thanks. A quick break, back in just a moment.